Hi there, welcome to another Monday and Joe News Interactive here on Joe News on Multi TV, DSTV Channel 421 and Go TV Channel 144. I'm Benis Abubedu. Today we'll talk about pressure mounted on President Akufuado to either sack embattled High Commissioner to South Africa, George E.C. Boating, or reassign him. I mean, something like this, you don't call the person to Flagstaff House, draft an apology letter for him, and ask him to sign. You sack him at once. We'll be taking your comments on that. And Member of Parliament for North Tongue, Samuel Okujitwa Blaka, says the opposition NDC is fed up with a litany of allegations leveled against them by the MPP government. So your comments are welcome on Facebook and Twitter. We are Joe News on TV. Let's start now from the stables of the opposition NDC. The Isi Boating saga continues unabated and former President Mahama says Mr. Isi Boating should be sacked. He was addressing team and supporters who were part of the NDC's unity walk in Cape Coast. Watch this. This is the supreme law of the land. If you are a party officer, you can say whatever you want, there is no problem. You can say, oh, all jobs should go to NDC people before it goes to MPP people. That's if you are a lotte You can say that because government doesn't pay you. Taxpayers don't pay you. You haven't sworn an oath to anybody. But when you are appointed as a high commissioner, not an ambassador, a high commissioner, and then you swear an oath to the, of allegiance to the constitution of Ghana, and the Constitution of Ghana says there shall be no discrimination and that you shall do justice to all manner of persons. That's what the Constitution of Ghana says. I mean, something like this, you don't call the person to Flagstaff House, draft an apology letter for him and ask him to sign. You sack him at once. Former President Muhammad, well, in another reaction, uh, not Tong MP Samuel Kujutua Blakwa, who is also ranking member of Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee, says the South African High Commissioner should be reassigned to play a role in the governing new patriotic party. Now, before I come to take your comments on, on, on all of this, we posted uh, President, former President Bahama's story that we couched on myjoinline.com about. He's saying that uh, Mr. E.C. Boating's apology is an apology in itself. And a lot of you have been sharing your comments with us. Abeku Odisika Emisa says, So John Mahama has forgotten the Muntie three saga so soon. He should be the last person to talk right now. Mr. Bafo says, does uh, Mahama also accept the fact that he was an apology of a president and his appetite for wanting to leave the country again after recklessly mismanaging state funds leading to his embarrassing and shameful defeat will definitely hit, uh, I'm sure you want to say snack. Akufu Ekia Dukia says, we shall overcome one. It's just a matter of time. Majority of Ghanaians are going to read and write and they'll realize uh, between the pretenders the weakest link. And uh, Albert Sebi says, we are aware that this is largely an MPP platform, okay? So your many comments against Mahaman uh, doesn't change anything. He laughs at his own comments. I don't know what he's referring to as an MPP platform. E. Bing says, Mahama still thinks he likes his film acting, where directors stop and select acts that represent his ideals. Kwame Anotia Mwabing says, is he serious at all? Did he promote a free anchor to the Flagstaff House after he messed up? Oh, you're saying, didn't he promote a free anchor to the Flagstaff House after he messed up during the World Cup? Seth Jenny Boateng says, uh, okay, I'm not going to go into all of that. Uh, the, the president was just given an example. If you've read Animal Farm, and uh, I know a couple of you have seen that video about uh, he making reference to some pigs and Napoleon and all that. That's just simple reference to a book, Animal Farm, uh, written by a journalist some time ago, not a recent book at all. And a lot of old folks I know have read that book. But now, let's bring everything to the center now. Former President Mahama says, Sap a supporting. And uh, not to our MP, some of the to black says, you know what, uh, just reassign him, just let him work for the party and not uh, for the state. If you were the president, what would you do? Because the pressure keeps coming, you know. And uh, Opoku Ahinka Richard says, uh, this is absolutely, dis absolutely disgusting and ridiculous. How can, okay, uses a lot of words there. 
teach your competitors what to do. I'm tired of commenting on this story. All right, Nasser Hassan Yayima says, humans are fallible, so he apologized. I will forgive him. What did the former president do to Yamin and Co when they made similar statements then? Uh, says, if my memory says me right, he reshuffled them. But today he's calling for someone's head. Halil Maestro says, I am tired of commenting on this issue. Yeah, I know a lot of people are feeling the fatigue. The president doesn't want to sack the man, nor the man wants to resign. Leave them. Posterity will judge us all. Owusu Ampene says, it's disgusting to hear uh, former President Mahama speak on national issues. He looks sorry and pathetic. Uh, okay, says he has no moral grounds. Okay, and the least said about him, the better. There are three replies to that. Let's just see what people think. And uh, please keep your comments very civil and straight to the point. Savannah Prince says, so if your family sends you to school and you fail your exams, you should be treated as rubbish and won't be allowed to contribute to whatever is happening in the family. He's asking Owusu there. Owusu Ampene says uh, he doesn't get the import of his message. Okay, interesting comments there. But nobody has really answered the question. If you were the president, what would you do? The pressure keeps coming, even though His Excellency A.C. Boatin, Ghana's High Commissioner to South Africa, has apologized. Mesa Brompa says, I'll just ask Mahama to punish the bus brandis and come again for the next person he should sack before we consider his opinion. Interesting there. Osman Al Hassan said, Last time I checked, President Mahama is no longer a president. Felicia Jamna says, Did he? All right. I'm um, sorry, I can't reiterate those uh, sentiments. Paul Kenny, um, I mean, I can re echo them. Paul Kenny says, Does Mahama look at himself in the mirror? He's asking, Did he suck the babies with sharp teeth? Joey Mensa says, Suck him. Unless, of course, that position is a joke. Public servant, uh, just see what you were talking about. And Mushin Baku says he must be sacked, not because uh, of the position, uh, but it's just logical. Kasim Justice says, Mr. Former President, be the last to complain, okay? Uh, President, former President Mahama, if you're watching, uh, Kasim thinks that you shouldn't be complaining about this. Yakubu Mahayadin says, I hope I got that right, uh, nothing after a week it will all die down so if it was the president you would have done nothing uh, if your opponent begins to accuse your team and want him out of the game then be careful because don't think he wants you to succeed leave the man alone mr president it will be hypocritical because he spoke uh, which one is the obvious truth yakubu i don't know which one uh, the man has apologized and you're here referring to it as obvious truth now i don't know i think you're rather uh Affecting the man, not helping him, you're rather dis dis disturbing his, his apology. Nana Pokwa Juman Bisma says, I won't waste my precious time on such comments. And James Addy says, and the High Commissioner's comments were very unfortunate, taking into consideration his position. I would like the President to recall him, all right? Prekese, all right, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go into that. Miss Panaro says, We only brought down people we thought they might be better than us. Uh, make them keep the hidden crime going on. This guy, um, and I've been doing something actually, all oh, right, it's so just a long one and quite twisted over there. Uh, but let's move on uh, because a lot of you are tired. Yes, I can feel the fatigue, uh, but former President Mahama says President Kofado should sack him. Moving on from His Excellency E.C. Boating's issues, uh, but still staying with the NDC, Member of Parliament for North Tong, Samuel Okujetu Ablafa, says the opposition National Democratic Congress is fed up with a litany of allegations leveled against them by the MPP government without proof. Now speaking on our news analysis show, News File, on Saturday, he said Article 88 of the 1992 Constitution is clear about what uh, the authorities have to do, that is to investigate and prosecute crime and corruption. And he's actually urging the Attorney General to act swiftly. And a lot of you have been talking about that. Uh, Albert Sadie says, those of you who were hailing the NPP for accusing the NDC of corruption uh, should have been wise to ask that prosecution start. But if you are thinking that 10 months is early, then you have uh, lost your head. So I'm shocked at your ignorance. Must it even take four months to start prosecuting people? And uh, he goes on to talk about uh, President Akufado being an attorney general under former President Kufo. How did it take him to start prosecuting? He mentions a lot of names, Victor Smith, Chachu, Dan, Agodope, and the rest. When did they secure judgment? It's sad uh, that you're still, uh, some guys are still blind and are only being deceived. There are 16 replies to that, very interesting, 22 reactions. And uh, we'll quickly view those. Nana 
Cyrus Apuaja says, you think the MPP rushed into things and feel like the NDC is asking and uh, Nanaya Watri comes back uh, and no, actually replies Albert and says, when was Albert Apit jailed? He was jailed in 2004, the trial began in 2002 and gives a lot of details about some names that um, Albert mentions in his in his earlier comment. Kwame Jemfi Adriana Isiedu says, it looks like someone is afraid his dad will end up in jail for chopping Ghana money. Uh, all right, um, Albert says fallacies don't go and bring appeals as commence, uh, uh, commencement. And then, I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. And a lot of you sharing your comments there. But all this also has to do with the fact that we are waiting for that special prosecutor's bill to be passed in Parliament. And the MPP said they're just waiting for that, then they'll start investigating. Meanwhile, we know that the president has been very vocal. He says that he's going to investigate all uh, issues of corruption leveled against his appointees. And we saw that, uh, especially with the... Um, the one involving two deputies, the de two deputies, uh, deputy chiefs of staff, and uh, A plus made that allegation, and then we know all the after stories. But uh, Bedia Kuyao says, "My brother, wait and see." Referring to Honorable Akuta Tuaplakwa, they are coming very soon. The NPP didn't come to power because of the NDC stealing. They have other work to do, and after that, you see whether they have evidence or not. Okay, and. Uh, We'll just go quickly to some other comments, uh, apart from replies to Albert's comment. Nanai Awatri says, I'm with Kennedy at Japan right now, and I can't control his laughter. Well, he said I should tell Okuzeto that he shouldn't forget the contract he rewarded to himself as a Ministry of Education. It will come out soon, all right? We can independently verify if Nanaya was really with Kennedy at Japan, but that's what he says. Thank you for sharing your comment. Diron says, oh, sure, there are mere uh, empty allegations just to divert the attention of Ghanaians from the unprecedented hardship and nepotism in this government. And uh, I'm still waiting for them to arrest the corrupt past officials they claim. By Jeremiah says, really, don't worry. It's just a matter of time. Time cannot keep a secret. Time will tell. It's easy, very cheap to say what you think because you wouldn't pay or be arrested for saying it. Don't watch the clock, but watch what it does. Interesting comment there. Randy, Randy says, you are shredding evidence in the various ministries at night. Okay, we, I'm sorry, we cannot verify that. So, uh, Osai Prempe Adraman says, really? Don't worry at all. This government is just 10 months old. You will see the evidence yourself after you and your counterparts are sentenced to life in prison. <laughs> really, I think that's quite an exaggeration. Boga Boga says, just relax. If you think you're smart enough to leave nothing to be traced, you'll be shocked at the end knowing that people are smarter than you are. This is Journeys Interactive. If you just join the show, we are picking comments on some... Um, statements made by Honorable Akujitua Blakwa over the weekend on news files saying that uh, the NDC is tired of all the allegations being leveled against them by the MPP without any proof. So he wants them to go ahead, uh, as the Constitution says, prosecute, arrest, and then we can move on from there. And a lot of you have been sharing your comments with us. There, A lot of you are just asking him to relax because time will tell. Indeed, it's time for a breather. Now, when we come back, we'll be talking a lot of football because yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. Manchester lost. Yes, I am. I'll be back with more. <laughs> anyway, let's talk more football because over the weekend, there was some action in the various leagues. Here in Ghana, Diana Stars have an extra trophy. But in England, the battle rages on. On Sunday, Chelsea beat Manchester. I'm very excited. You have no idea. Because of two people, my producer and my sister, they disciplined me when we lost to Tottenham. I mean, Real Madrid on Facebook. They really, I don't even want to go into that. So I'm really excited that it wasn't too many goals, just one goal. Chelsea beat Manchester United to one goal. Echo me. Now, a lot of you have been reacting to this on Facebook. Let's check out your comments. And uh, Thomas Banda says, Guy commentators are savage. When Marino was writing on his piece of paper or booklet, this is a discussion between the commentators. A uh, commentator one, once he writing on the paper, commentator two, he's probably asking himself whether he parked the bus at the wrong area. Oh, really? That's quite mean. Farrell Bank says Chelsea versus Manchester United. Manchester United couldn't just win. I mean, Manu's best striker, Lukaku, who's a former Chelsea striker. The Awenga, Mata, is ex Chelsea player. Their informed middle, Matic, ex Chelsea player. Their coach, Moreno, ex Chelsea.
practically it was Chelsea A against Chelsea B. <laughs> I just love this. I love it. Ebenezer AC Mensa says, well done. But City already have the title in their pocket. That's what he says. Francis Mensa says, we shall see. The cup will remain in London. And Ebenezer says, oh, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not your you or dinner who says, in Stamford Bridge, Manchester United is a singing band. Not, ooh, not a football. Oh, no, that's too harsh. It's not from me. Halil says, um, what does that man use? How far now? I'm sure you mean Manchester United fans or something like that. Okay, so guys, it's football and we do the tease and don't take it to heart. Yeah, and I don't, I don't even support any team in the English Premier League. I'm a Real Madrid girl and you all know that by now, don't you? But let's stay with the EPL. Manchester City have widened the gap uh, in the league. Uh, eight points by eight points. Some analysts think that Manchester City will win the trophy. Others think it's early days yet. But what do you think? This is your show and here we let the world know what you're thinking. M Manuel Gaston says, leading with eight points, Man City can take the trophy this season. If it were Arsenal, I would have said otherwise. Oof. And um, Mohamed Sharif says, the day is still young and anything can happen. So to the last six to five matches, uh, his size says uh, it's going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, Asirifi B says, I can now judge to say the EPL is between Chelsea and Man City. Prince Nurudin Balmia says, too early to judge. The season is so bright for them to lift the trophy. And Toko Jacob says, this season, nothing will stop City from winning that trophy. And Sadat Larry Kukuko says, there must be a change. They will drop some points. And John Waters says, from how things are going, I can say they will definitely win the EPL this season. Casino says, uh, until the last whistle, no team can be described as champion. Chelsea is Morata, and Morata is Chelsea. Imano Kutu says, they can only win if they maintain the same momentum. It's all about momentum, isn't it? Salifu Yaya says, I think it's cool for them to lose. At least Marino will stop running his mouth. Oh, I don't know if this comment found itself another wrong subject because I'm sure they're talking about the Chelsea Man U match. Bikala says Chelsea is capable of giving them a run for their money, referring to Manchester City. We can only tell after January. Edu James Fisher he says United will bounce back. Mark Jr. says EPL is between Man City and Chelsea. And Ebenezer says they'll win. And Enoch also agrees and says yes, they will win. So one last time, let me just laugh at Manchester United fans. I, I mean, if you're a fan, I, I like you, but just because of two people, my producer and my sister. So I'm sorry, Manchester United fans. But we won a match yesterday, yeah, Real Madrid by three goals. Yeah, so we are doing good. Well, it's time to bring you our video of the day. I'm sure by now you know who Big Shark is. If you follow the trends, you know, this show is all about the trends. So Big Shark is one Ghanaian in, living in London and he has really, really made some name for himself. I'm sure you, you've heard that one, you know, Masna Hart. The thing goes, okay, well, just take a look at this. So, Big Shaq, in that particular hit song, he says, two plus two is four, minus one, three, quick maths. So, some two radio presenters decided to put him to the test. Just take a look at it. How good is he in mathematics? You know what cracked me up? E for excellent. How do you say that? You got an E in math and that's for excellent. Anyway, that's big shock for you. And that's just something to lighten your day. And it's just interesting. The lady just lost it. It was 45 and she said 42. But big shock says, yo, math's not dumb. You know, after I said math's not hard. I mean, a lot of people are even using it in their sermons and all that. But that's how we end this edition of Journeys Interactive. I'm Dennis Abubedu. It's always a pleasure to come your way just to hear what you have to say about trending issues. Don't forget on primetime news uh, from 7 to 9. We also have Journeys Interactive uh, in that program. And we are also very interactive on Facebook and Twitter. Join News on TV. The interaction continues until tomorrow. Do take care of yourself.